we were looking at premenopausal women who were receiving curative intent chemotherapy. Specifically, we included women with hormone receptor negative breast cancer because this is a group who were receiving chemotherapy where we were familiar with the risk for ovarian failure and it's a group that wasn't going to go on to receive additional endocrine treatments which might interfere with measuring ovarian function down the road. For hormone receptor negative breast cancer, you don't get that beneficial effect of the estrogen withdrawal that you would have with hormone receptor positive breast cancer. So for this group, ovarian failure is only a side effect. And premature ovarian failure brings with it menopausal symptoms, sexual symptoms, as well as infertility, which is a huge concern for many young women. We looked at whether gazerolin, which is an LHRH agonist, basically shutting down the ovaries for the duration of chemotherapy could reduce the risk of ovarian failure for women receiving chemotherapy. We initiated the gazerolin about a week before the first chemotherapy dose and actually continued it throughout the chemotherapy treatment. We found that the women who received the gazerolin had about a 70% reduction in developing ovarian failure at two years following the initiation of the study. So I think the clinical implica implications are that we now have for the first time a treatment that we can offer that can improve the chances of a woman preserving ovarian function. Yeah. You also had a story about pregnancy, didn't you? We also looked at pregnancy outcome because that's obviously an important reason why women want to avoid early ovarian failure. And we found that there was more than doubling the rate of pregnancy in women who received the gazerolin compared that those, with those that did not. Mm. What, was there any impact on uh, overall survival, disease-free survival? We looked at disease-free survival and overall survival to assure the safety of this approach in this population of breast cancer patients. Interestingly, we found that the gazerolin actually was associated with a better disease-free survival and overall survival. And although we had not originally stratified the two groups for disease risk factors such as stage, HER2, or nodal information, we did relook at the disease-related outcomes by stage and found the same difference, same benefit in terms of both disease-free and overall survival. Mm. So what are the clinical implications overall coming out of your study? So I think the main clinical implication is the ovarian preservation data. By um, using the gazerolin for ovarian protection during chemotherapy, we can improve prospects for both fertility and preventing early menopause. The survival and disease-free survival outcomes, I think, really require further investigation to understand this better. And the action of gazerolin is what? What's happening It's here? an LHRH analog, and it basically interrupts the normal pituitary gonadal access and will um, put the ovaries at rest, prevent excess cycling of the ovaries during chemotherapy. So it protects them, in, in effect? That's the hope. Right. Mm. What then should doctors be thinking about your results now? I think that uh, the implication for these results may go beyond the specific group that we studied. Uh, while this group, uh, I certainly would offer women with hormone receptor negative breast cancer who would like to preserve ovarian function, would certainly offer this intervention. Uh, we could also consider this for women with other conditions receiving similar chemotherapy, such as lymphoma. Mm, so how strongly would you offer it? I, if, for somebody that would wants to prevent this side effect, I think it is the best thing we have to offer, and I think we have strong and convincing evidence of both its efficacy as well as its safety. Thank you very much okay. indeed. Thank That's you. Wonderful. Do you have a business card? <laughs>